the lovely Diana Steele joining us in the studio today, a month until Christmas. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> I can't. I'm trying not to panic. Shopping days are getting oh, numbered. <laughs> yes. Um, and lots of people are planning meals and uh, exercise regimes and everything else heading into the holidays. Uh, so we're taking your questions. Sharon is on the phone right now from Alder Grove. Good afternoon, Sharon. Hi there. What's your question for Diana? Diana, do you have a magic list for food, energy foods, energy drinks, energy, energy? <laughs> <laughs> well, since my company name is Eating for Energy, <laughs> that seems to be an easy oh, okay. one for me. Um, absolutely. I think the first thing to think about is, are there any nutrient deficiencies that you're dealing with that are causing you to have a low energy? And so if you have been feeling really low energy long for a long time, if you have dark circles under your eyes or your skin is looking a little bit grayish in tone, you may have an iron deficiency. So I would go in and see your doctor. The other thing I would check is your B12. As we get older, we're not able to absorb our B12 as, as well. Uh, we have less intrinsic factors. So getting your B12 checked would be a good idea. And then foods for energy. One really important thing is to not allow yourself to go too long without eating because your blood sugars will drop and you will feel fatigued. Also getting enough sleep is very important and staying hydrated. And then my key foods, well carbohydrates give you an immediate burst of energy, so grain products and fruits and vegetables and dairy products all have carbohydrates, but remember that carbs don't last very long so you need to make sure you have a source of protein with them. So having protein from chicken or fish or meat or nuts and seeds like a peanut butter on your toast for example or having yogurt with your fruit, that will sort of act as an anchor for your energy and make it lasts longer so your energy level will be more consistent throughout the day. I hear a lot of that sort of advice where it's uh, instead of breaking it down into our traditional three meals a day that it's better to have a good breakfast and then have a snack in the morning have a lighter lunch maybe a snack in the afternoon and is that what sort of maintains the stable blood sugars yeah, yeah. so eating every three to four hours during the day rather than eating you know every five hours mm -hmm. or so and you'll also control your appetite so the meals don't end up being as big if you go six hours with no food you're pretty hungry right right yeah. okay uh, Stephanie is on the line from Langley good afternoon Stephanie Oh, hi. I'm just calling. Um, I have a seven and a half month old uh, baby and I constantly get migraines and I'm just wondering if there's something that I can do that will help with these migraines that I could eat that would help. Well, yeah, the, sometimes migraines can be linked to nutrient deficiencies as well. You can look at um, magnesium supplementation, 350 milligrams of magnesium per day. If there are any foods that you've been avoiding because of, you know, you weren't feeling well um, during your pregnancy, for example, and you've just continued avoiding them, perhaps consider reintroducing them. They may be something that you were um, needing in the, in the past. Hydration, if you're breastfeeding, uh, you're drinking, you need to drink a lot more fluid. So, you know, aim for three liters of fluid per day or more, and then and also, again, you're probably very busy, so it's hard to you know, grab those little snacks to keep your blood sugar stable. But if you can have you know, a banana in between your meals and um, have a glass of milk, uh, that will just help give you a little bit more nutrition uh, throughout the day because the number one trigger for a migraine is a low blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And then it can be confounded also with other things like change in um, temperature, um, barometer, that sort of thing. Yeah, I hear a lot of people who uh, suffer from migraines, it's worse at different times of the year. year. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good luck with that, Stephanie. Adele from Delta is on the phone. Hi, Adele. Hi. Um, I have a question regarding um, Arctic Red Ruby oil or uh, krill oil and uh, whether or not it's safe to use as a dietary supplement. I don't know about Arctic Red Ruby oil, but certainly krill oil is a very good um, oil. It's very high in omega-3 fatty acids, and it's also environmentally friendly because we have a lot of krill. So um, it's, it's a good... Um you know, environmentally friendly choice mm -hmm. to include. So, absolutely. Sustainable. And, Sustainable. And so exactly what would yes. you use something like that for? Well, in a way of getting uh, your omega-3 fatty acids, having one gram to um, three, upwards of three grams of fish oils can be beneficial. If you have high triglycerides, then taking uh, two grams of fatty acids can help lower your triglycerides. If you have high blood pressure, it can be helpful in reducing inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, arthritis also can be beneficial. And some research around um, depression and also Oh wow! Yeah. So do you have to take it just like on a teaspoon, or they, can you mix often it? Often it comes a... in a tablet or oh, okay. a, pill, a pill, sorry, okay. like a liquid oil okay. pill. But otherwise, yeah, it would be a teaspoon that you could put in your smoothie. Oh, I was going to say yeah. that's better. <laughs> I like to disguise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like to disguise the food. All right, Mike from Poco is on the line. Hi, Mike. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I was just wondering if there was any nutrition for uh, hair loss. 
That's typically a genetic thing. <laughs> so unless you went through some significant, uh, very low fat diet with low protein, um, typically it's going to be a genetic sort of just predisposition. So you can thank your father's father, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's where it goes. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Lots of people would like to have a magic pill for that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Diana. If you want to know more, if you have any other nutrition questions, you can contact Diana at 604-739-3290 or check out her website, eatingforenergy.com. You can also follow Diana on Twitter at eatingforenergy. Thanks again. Thank you.